If you enjoy our original content, please consider becoming a supporter on Anchor so that we can continue to bring you laughs every week. The following program may contain immature situations, themes, and is intended for an adult audience. The opinions expressed here do not necessarily reflect the views of everyone else working on the show. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, guys. Welcome to, welcome to the Dana McDermott Show, guys. Uh, we're doing it live from uh, Everrock Studios. Uh, Jesse Shattis is a drummer and uh, also a studio uh, maniac. He's incredible. Uh, he is his place, and he is one of the coolest guys I've ever known, and he's uh, this is his studio. So thank you to Everrock Studios. If you guys are in L.A., please check it out. Um, so it's a big day, Kevin, right? Exciting. It's very exciting to me. This is my, what, the third show in LA? Second it show is. in LA. Second show in LA. Um, yes, so it get, it's, huh? Yes, it is. Very really? exciting. <laughs> so we got uh, a lot of uh, uh, special days today. We have uh, Boys Club Day. Uh, it's the third, wait a minute, why does it say on the third Saturday in September, Kevin? Because they celebrated them too. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. well, that's confusing. It is. Um, <laughs> they celebrate uh, the Boys and Girls Club uh, Day for kids, but apparently girls have been excluded from the name of the day. Uh, the club happens, I guess the club is more progressive than the calendar. <laughs> maybe, maybe they lost their password to their calendar and they just haven't been able to change it. It's also Emergency Medical Services Day. So if you have a serious medical emergency today, it's your lucky day. Hey, bad luck is good too, right? <laughs> May, it's also May rate. By the way, if anybody has a serious problem, it's I, I'm blaming Kevin for that joke. Um, May Ray Day. May Ray, please tell us what the hell this day means. Uh, it's oh, it's it's uh, it's a day where everybody goes out and enjoys the rays of sunshine. So it's so it's basically like what Earth without the cannabis, right, Kevin? Or anything fun? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. And if your name and if your name is Ray, it's a chance to tell to lie to your friends and say the day is about you. Interesting <laughs> side note: the Tonys were originally a, an award for the coolest person named Tony. A lot of people don't know that. Kevin, your job as a sidekick is to laugh. <laughs> the same guy won that one every year. Dead silence. I feel like I'm dying in front of my sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny, and I didn't write it, so I kind of think it's going to get a good. <laughs> it's National Hepatitis Testing Day. Wow, wow. Most hepatitis gets a B. In this celebration, if you missed out on a serious medical emergency, you can still revel in some luck. Uh, <laughs> It's also National Asian and Pacific Islander HIV slash AIDS Awareness Day. Imagine the kind of luck to have HIV AIDS, but just be out, outside the area celebrating with a people named Ray. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I, you know, I'm, it's also, oh, this is a good one. It's National Scooters, Scooter Day. Um, uh, I don't know if I, I, I moved the joke around to, <laughs> that's my bad. But it's national. It's National Scooter Day, a day to celebrate scooters. It it really should be the day you clothesline scooters, people scootering on the sidewalk, is what it should be. 
<laughs> I hate that. They're going like 35 miles per hour on the sidewalk. That's all right. Testing your reflexes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's also Turn Beauty Inside Out Day, which is a lot more marketable than its former name, Sexually Impale A Casual Acquaintance Day. <laughs> <laughs> It's also World IBD Day, which I hope means impressive belly dance day. Me too. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't want. You know what? Let's move on to the next one. Good National idea. Juice National Juice Slush Day. Uh, this is a holiday that just needs a little rum or tequila. And uh, I'm 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 actually moving to start a snow slush day where you drive close to the curb to try and splash pedestrians. It's also a day to prevent your dog from eating yellow slush. Turns out the dog dogs prefer tequila as well. So uh, <laughs> National Employee Health and Fitness Day. Anything to take the attention away from a raise. Right. Why can't it be Na National Employee Raise Day? It's like, hey, I'd like a raise. I've worked hard and I've added responsibilities. The boss is like, no, no raise. You can do some squat thrusts, though. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have a fitness coach coming later on, so stay tuned. Very but nice. first, first, we have uh, an amazing comedian. Um, she is just a wonderful human being. I've done many shows with her. Um, she's uh, been on Netflix, Comedy Central, and other evil empires. Please welcome Bernadette Pauly. Yay! Thank you, guys. Yay. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Danny. I love your point about National Fitness at Work Day. Why don't you just give people subsistence wages and let them live a life? But, you know, God forbid we did that. Right? right. <laughs> yeah, it's it, unbelievable. It, it's, we should uh, try everything else first. Yes, yes. The dog and pony <laughs> show continues. <laughs> Do you like my exotic background, by the way? It just, yeah, what it well, here's the deal. It. I'm so tired. You can tell so much about a person by the books they pretend to read from their Zoom background. <laughs> right? And I'm I'm like, you know what? I'm a comedian. I have nothing to lose. I've given up on life. This is my list of things to do, like from a Thursday in 1992. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and I leave it there just to remember, hey, as my dad would say, every day above ground is a good day. What are you going to do? This, You get what you get. <laughs> but I love your background. It's very sassy, Kevin. Very sassy. Beautiful. Yeah, it's in the in the green screen is kind of falling, and we can see your light behind you. <laughs> I know. It's, I know. It's it's a rainbow. It's two separate worlds converging in an entertaining way. Isn't it nice? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Kevin's Kevin's in flux in the matrix right now. Yeah. He is. Day. Yeah. I love so, the show, uh, Danny. It looks beautiful. Yep. You like the show? It's fun, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a this lot of fun. This is my buddy's studio. This is Everrock Studios. It's gorgeous. Uh, is that in Burbank? Uh, it's no. in Mission Hills. Mission Hills. Oh, okay. Okay. It looks like it's reminding me of a studio I was in, but oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, this, he designed it himself. It's really amazing. Um, nice. Yeah. So uh, you've done a lot. I mean, when did you start stand-up? You've, you've been doing stand-up a long time now, right? I started stand-up in 1872. <laughs> um jesus i don't know it before 2000 that's for sure like i think in the late 90s maybe like 96 97 something like that yeah wow. maybe maybe 98 yeah i was around the same time i think i did some in 93 uh but i, I don't know if i i don't think i got serious about it until the late 90s yeah so yeah yeah Sometimes I wish I started lit earlier. Sometimes I wish I never started, but you oh, know. I usually wish I never started. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got a class on breaking into stand-up comedy. It's like, I need to take a class on breaking out of stand-up comedy, but <laughs> right? things could be worse. <laughs> well, at least you have Al. <laughs> I do, I've got the Al, the husband Al, who's also a comedian and he keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> I think it's the reverse, but we'll move on from that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that little insight. I do too. I'll agree with you and tell him that. Yeah, yeah. What I know about Al, I think I think you're you're saving his life probably every other day. <laughs> <laughs> very very kind of you. Very very kind of you. So uh, yeah, we're both we're both going to be in uh, Arizona this weekend. We're going to be at Stir Crazy Comedy Club in uh, Glendale. Okay. Uh -huh. 
So anybody in the area watching, come see us. We'll do four shows. Al's actually stopping in doing some guest spots before he goes oh, to do uh, other shows. Yeah. Now, what's it like being married to another comic? Oh, people ask that a lot. Well, uh, we're not competitive with each other, just in case you're wondering. Like, I, I want what's best for him and he want. doesn't mean we don't want to kill each other half the time. You know, right, you go right. on the road or you're in the same business. We share an office. So there's going to be a murder suicide at some point. It's just going to happen. Um, but that's, but that's, I, I, I personal, that's ahead, healthy ahead. personal rage, not professional rage. And frankly, it warms my heart to hear that. Oh, I'm so glad I could warm up that heart. That's, that's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. I always thought if I snapped someday, it's going to be the classical music. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I, I always thought, you know what makes me nervous? Elevator music, which is kind of classical, right? Oftentimes right. classical. Well, it's instrumental for sure. Because it is designed to calm you down, it freaks me out and makes me feel like I could snap or someone's gonna snap. So I understand that. I always thought if I always thought of a serial killer doing his work to like Frosty the Snowman or something like that, like Christmas stuff in the back. But that's just me. <laughs> Sounds like a movie. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta write it's it. Some, you gotta write it. I will. Let, you know. You want to write it for me? <laughs> you know what? I, it's funny because uh, 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 God, uh, Carrie Louise uh, mm -hmm. might be working on a project. She came on the show a while back. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're we're talking. We we got a we got a Google Doc that we haven't touched in three weeks, but we're gonna do something eventually. <laughs> well, that's great, and it's funny you mentioned Carrie because a lot of people mix us up. They think I'm her and she's me. And it well, happens in the industry, but it will happen in the middle of Kentucky. Someone really? will say, oh, we saw you here last year. We loved your bit on your twins. Yes. Yes. Wow. Like it's so weird to us. Yeah. Cause we're both married to comedians maybe, but I, she's got I twins. Yeah, yeah. I have a dog. So, you know. <laughs> Is that the dog that terrified me, terrorized me the last time I was at, when I did that interview at your place? Yeah, that's my buddy. My buddy, <laughs> actually, buddy has gone to heaven. We will never get over that. We have a pillow of buddy, but now we have a feral cat that comes in and out of the house. That really. So we're saving another life. He might kill us in our sleep, or he might get some feral diseases. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. He's, he's trying to do both. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a comedian. Could it get worse? I'm in green rooms every night of the week. So what's a feral cat bite to me? Right, right. One thing yeah. I learned as a comedian, never ask that question. Could it get anywhere? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's never so true. That question. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, so now I want to talk about, uh, you did Red Eye with Tom Shalou. Oh, God, yeah, I did Red Eye. Yeah, that was you a know, lot of fun. I always enjoyed Red Eye. Yeah, I. it's funny because I, Tom was going to get me on that show. And yeah. I think I, I, I put some... Uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, posts that I don't think Republicans liked at the yes. time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're a little lefty like me. I remember you were doing an HBO project and you were over our house and we were talking and we share some lefty, lefty ideas veering on conspiracy theories, but just because they're a conspiracy doesn't mean they're not happening. And we bonded over this. And right. when I, I think that Fox for a period was putting me on various shows because I'm a bit, um, more left, abrasive yeah. left than liberal. I, you know, I'm not much of a smooth, uh, warm and fuzzy limousine liberal. That's not me. Right. So I think they liked that I could be a little bit reactionary and uh, they would put me on because I would veer off in an offensive direction and they loved that. But then I'd veer off in a socialist communist and they'd be like, no, 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 no. We want you to go this way. And I was like, no, no, I kind of go this way. <laughs> so I feel like I had a nice little run at that network and I kept thinking, why are they having me in? And I think they thought that I would be, you know how they all have their token uh, lefty who's not really a lefty, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Right, and right. just like CNN will have the fake right wing guy and they're just really saying whatever they get paid to say, let's be honest. I think yeah, they yeah. thought, oh, this little wacky blonde might be the one, but eventually it was like, 
could you stop talking a little bit? Could you, just, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, we love your opinions. We love your opinions. Come on in, share your opinions. Can you knock that off? We'd rather not hear those opinions. So yeah, but that was fun. And I, I believe, did I do the show with Tom Shalou? I, I did it um with well, Greg. On, on your IMDb. It does? Oh, then I must have. I think we were both guests. <laughs> we were both guests when Greg was hosting, because now Greg is doing a, a different show. It's the Greg okay. Gutfeld, Gretfeld, Gutfeld show. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, yeah. yeah. So I think maybe I had it when Tom was a host as well. I don't remember. It was over a span of years there. Yeah, I was. I, yeah, Tom never got me on the show. I don't. I didn't know why. I. I was. It was probably because I. I mean, I'm. I'm not really. I don't consider myself Democrat or Republican. We don't really do politics on the show. I wanted it to be an escape from politics for people. So I was just. I just noticed that you were doing. You did that, and I. You know, I love Tom. Um, I love Tom too. I love Tom. He's such a great guy. He really is. Yeah. I hope um, I get to see him around soon. Yeah, where is he? I, he? Oh, he's in New York. He's probably doing the New York clubs, right? Or is he on the mm -hmm. road? I think he's in New York right now, primarily, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Gotham Live. Oh, Gotham Live was a lot of fun. I did that. Uh, we had a great episode. Uh, Al was on it with me. And you can't go wrong on that show. You just it's can't, you can't. It's always an amazing audience, it seems like, for that show. Yeah, it's an amazing audience. Uh, they're not fake and, you know, fluffed up, but they're just real. I don't know how they're, who they're getting in, but they're they're real comedy fans, people who are really there for stand-up comedy and a good time, which is yeah, always yeah, fun. Yeah. And it's always a very mixed show, which I love a mixed show, a little bit of everybody. Now, uh, and you've done some, you know, I didn't realize you did some, uh, You've been doing some uh, acting Porn. shorts and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Who hasn't? I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just looking for my next gig. Thanks for that visual, Kevin, in my head. Thank you. <laughs> That's actually fetish number 384 on the menu. <laughs> you ladies want to save time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, you, you, uh, you, it looks like you were shooting some video shorts where you, um, were those you got cast in those, or are you, are you and uh, Al produce stuff together at all? Yeah, we've been doing a lot. We've been doing a lot of crazy little stuff. Uh, I've done other people's projects. I've done great projects that I love. I've done a lot of crap that you just do it for the paycheck. Uh, and Al and I have been doing some stuff. We yeah we we shot a, a, a three minute western out in the desert. We went to Joshua Tree last month. Uh, he's a he's a big Western fan. Beautiful, beautiful backdrop. Just a funny little shootout scene that was ridiculous. Uh, I think I, I had saw some, that actually. Yeah. Did you put that up? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I had a, I had a gun holster. We both had the total garb, and my gun holster had tampons in it, and his had. <laughs> It was ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous, but it was very. The t I got a lot of uh, comments on the tampons. Apparently, it went over big with uh, men and women alike. So they won't let you out. No. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that was fun. We we do our characters. You know, I like that. I like being able to create my own stuff now. It's much better for me than like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, when you wait around for people to put you in their stuff. And I've done a couple of great creative projects that were other people's that were awesome too. You know how it is. You just yeah. go from project to project and some are just much more fun than others. Now, do you find that, that uh, COVID and all the quarantine and all that kind of stuff has actually pushed you to be more creative and create your own work? I know a lot of people have done that. That's why the show came about, to be honest with you. Um, really? I think that's wonderful. I, yeah. I do. Um, this is the feral cat's tail, by the way. Nothing crazy is going on. Why'd you, um, call tail? <laughs> you can't prove that. <laughs> um, I, I do think that COVID actually m made people go create their own thing. And, you, you know, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep expressing yourself. And I think some really great stuff has come out of it. This show yeah. being one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So what happened? Where's you back up against the wall and you just said, God, I, I, I can't do I this anymore. Do I've got it. Yeah. I yeah. Need to do it. So what, what happened originally was uh, I started shooting these shorts uh, about a guy in quarantine who started developing split personalities because he was alone for so long and the personalities didn't get along with each other or they all wanted to do different things and he just couldn't never get anything done. 
That's and fabulous. It, yeah, it's called Living in Corona. Um, I've got to do some more episodes of it, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. It's just been crazy. But what happened was uh, uh, someone saw that. A lot of people saw that uh, and loved it. And one person pushed me, you got to do your own show. And so I started doing the show and it's now it's what? Thir this is episode 36, I think. Yeah. yeah. And you and Kevin ho hooked up or. Well, Kevin, you know. no, we never had sex. Um, Kevin no. and I. <laughs> you can't do that either, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Kevin forever. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, it was funny when I was trying to figure out who I wanted for a sidekick. He was really the top of the list. He was the first person I thought of. So. Oh, that's and, great. Yeah. And it worked out. Cool. And the yeah. desperation mode. Into what mode? Into desperation mode. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I like that. Would you be my partner in desperation mode? Yep. Sure. Yep. It's the, it's the end way. of the world. Be my co-host for the end of the world. <laughs> I just got my second vaccine, by the way. Did you get a vaccine or no? Uh, I did. I did. What'd you get? I got the Pfizer. I got Moderna. Did and you I'm uh, um, then the second shot. Um, I, my arm was a little sore. I went to bed that day after the second one and the middle of the night, I woke up with chills and such a fever. And for 24 hours, I felt like a truck ran me over. Every millimeter of my body was achy. I felt like Mike Tyson threw me down the stairs and the chills would not stop the fever shaking. And then the next day I woke up fresh as a daisy. Like, so it came as, and left. It was not fun. How about you? I had nothing. Good. I had, I, yeah. I had, I had uh, the first shot. I, I was, I think I was a little achy and tired, but it was only, I mean, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Um, and it was only for, a few hours and then the second shot I just got yesterday at three o'clock and nothing yet. So I think I'm. Th oh, good. I, I hope. Yeah. I think you're in the clear. I think. I think so. Though. I hope so. I don't, I don't want to say that and then have God, you know, yeah. see this is the thing a comedian should never say because God's like, Hmm. <laughs> I, know, I know. I know. Kevin, did you get yours? I did. I got vaccinated actually at city field. And the only side effect I had was I was eliminated from winning the national league East this year. Oh my God, that's tragic. That's how it goes. I'm so, are you going to get therapy for that? I don't know if they have it. <laughs> Maybe find a reliever in the off season or something like that. So uh, have you done the Zoom shows at all? I did a million of them. I usually make fun of my backdrop. That's why I left it like this for you. Um, that's amazing. You did a lot yeah, of them, huh? At first, I didn't want, you know, I wasn't into them. And a few of them, you know, they can be very tedious. But they became their own kind of art. If, if people keep them short and sweet and they're produced well, I think they can go over well. And I think they might be here to stay now because of that. How about you? Um, yeah, not, not to the extent that they are, but yeah. I actually think that they probably will and they'll probably serve as a little appetizer for people to come and see what you actually do. And I think they have a place. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there are some people, you know, certain comics have said, oh, I keep a mic stand in the living room. Some people are very animated. Um, I've seen a couple of people that have really been hitting it hard with the Zoom shows. Really? Like you, you can't just sit back, you know, it's like anything, it is what it is and it can suck, but you, yeah. you've got to go with it. And I know a few people uh, that, are kind like I like I've seen Jackie Fabulous do a few and she kind of just sits. She doesn't she's in the moment and she does this storytelling. You know, she's really turned it into its own thing. It you know, being kind of yeah. true to herself. Yeah. yeah um yeah, yeah. without the need to have the mic stand and all. And then some people do have the mic stand and I've done a little bit of both. I get a little bit animated. Like right now this is a talk show. I'm not being as obnoxious as I could be. But um right. Yeah, I've 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 seen some people command them pretty well, and I've seen some great comedians that we we know are really really good, and they just kind of they sit, you know, it's it's they're it's just hard, like it's I'm, a hard thing to do. You got no audience, so I mean, I've done a, I've only, I resisted it. I just I just for me, it's like it's like an open mic, you know, yes. you know, a bad open mic. You know what I mean? I, so I resisted it. Um, I but, did it for I did too for a while. 
Yeah. I did too. I and did. I'm not going to... I'm not going to say I weren't on, didn't see some terrible ones. So that's why there were months when I just wouldn't do them. But did you ever end up seeing some that were, you know, had redeeming qualities that got a little bit progressively better? I mean, I, I, the ones I've done, I, I did one, uh, I don't know, were you involved with the one that were, they were trying to do the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest Zoom comedy show? Yes. Now see, yeah, I was. I did, I did that one too. So I thought that was great because I thought it was going to be, it could have been a stick in the mud comedy, you know, but it was all green room riffing. I thought yeah. it was good. Yeah. If, I, if, if someone wants to step into a green room and eavesdrop at broken, damaged comedians <laughs> making fun of each other. I think that's the way to go rather than trying to do stand up. Yes. That's the way I like to do it. Um, my last. Yeah. Some, did, some stand -up I did do stand up, but, um, I was just pretending I was talking to the to the four guys on the screen, and it it, it, it went well. I I actually enjoyed it, and I was I was happy with the results. So, um, but I, I I like riffing better. You know what I mean? I just yes. I enjoy it. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know yeah. what? You might as well pretend you're just talking to four guys on the screen. It's like if you're doing late night in a club and there's four people in the audience, you're not going to pretend you're playing to a packed room. You've got to address these four people in the audience. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Exactly. And I, I like, I, I, I kind of like the idea, like, like this, this show where you, you get to, you know, talk, you know, if, if you're doing jokes, you have the other comedians just throw in a line or a punchline if they want, or jump yeah. in and talk, break it up. You know, I, I, I don't mind that stuff. I like that stuff, you know? Yeah, no, me too. Me too. And I actually did write a few, like I've got the feral cat here and he interrupted a show once and I've, it, it actually um, kind of jump-started me a little. I've got all my notebooks here. Sometimes I'll put notes up on the screen. And um, I wrote a few bits, you know. Yeah. I didn't think I would. Like, you know, how you, you're doing shows around town and new bits come to you or you add to them a, as you go from show to show. Like, that actually kind of started happening a little bit here in this crazy little office of mine. And I thought, huh, interesting. Cause yeah. you got to open up the floodgates. It's, it's got to come out of you somehow. So. So what's going know. on, what, what's going on with the future for you? What's happening? What do you, what do you want? I ask myself that every day, Danny, <laughs> every day. Uh, I, I want to do something like this. I've been saying it for over a year. Um, I'm gonna, I've been doing a little bit of uh, booking and producing on the side. I don't know. I, I just keep going. I don't yeah. know. I, I'm just going to keep going. I've got to do what makes me happy. Uh, I, I don't know. I think that this pandemic, I hope, will make pe some people have become in tune with what's mm -hmm. really important, right? And I think yeah. people are tired of. Uh, can I say bullshit? Yeah, I hope so. I think people are tired of that, both politically and uh, in Hollywood, and like with the lie. So. Um, yeah, I just got to keep going. That's where I think Zoom is empowering. You can start to reach your own audience in social media. It's got bad sides, of course, but that's pretty cool. And I think more and more people across the boards, all different types of people, all different ages, are happy to seek out and find something that's a little bit more authentic, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. It could be a cooking show. It can be talking. It can be, you know... And it, fashion, it, but just something that's not just so ugh, spoon fed to us by a bunch of PR yeah. people telling you that this is legit. And you're like, well, that's fine. Leave that to the networks. I'm going to go look at my rinky dink YouTube channel that has 400 followers because I love this guy. Like, he, I, I, I love candles. He's the candle. I want to watch him. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't have to be, you know. Or even if you want to talk about Hollywood or sure. art or entertainment, but in a more authentic way, I think people are craving that and being stuck at home, not knowing what's happening in the world. Economic disparity is glaringly obvious. Right. I mean, it, just look at the, you, you know, well, uh, everything. You, yeah. Uh, protests, yeah. killing, but, everything. So but I, I think I, I, I'm trying, you know, I always try to look, Look at the good things that are coming out of it. And I'm hoping that a lot, I think a lot of good has come out of it. A lot of bad has obviously, but I think we're headed more in the right direction now. So do, do you see, like I kind of, people want more some, stuff. 
Yeah, and I think they're not going to tolerate. Oh, is that me? Bullsh yeah, that's you. You're a little frozen. All right. I think uh, while he's frozen, where can people find you? Where's the best place for the people to interact with you? Thank you, Kevin. Um, I am, well, I'm, I, I have a lot of people on Facebook for some reason. I know Facebook isn't like the cool trendy thing, but most of my interactions on Facebook, a lot of uh, Facebook people are the ones that come out to see me. So it's Bernadette Polly. Easy. I don't really deal with my comedy page. You can just follow along with my shenanigans. On Instagram, I'm the Bernadette Polly because somebody took my name, I guess. And on Twitter, I'm at Bernie Polly, B E R N I E P A U L E Y. And always hit me up. I try to give people comps and discounts if they come out to shows for the second time and blah, yeah. blah, blah. All right. Yeah. There you have it. So that's how people can stay in touch with you. Yeah. And, uh, I think I heard someone else pop into the studio. There's I Danny. I know you do have to go, Bernadette. So thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, I've got to run. I've got to go do a, a, a show at a golf club of all places. But I so appreciate you guys. Mwah. Thank Mwah. you and have a great night. See ya. See ya. Bye. Very nice. All right. I did, that wasn't. <laughs> okay. Welcome back, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. I, I... bring you back up to speed. You can find Bernadette on Facebook. <laughs> Instagram and Twitter. Twitter's at Bernie Pauly. Uh, here you are, and let's resume the show. Let's redo it. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin was hanging on to that hosting a little bit longer there. To <laughs> <laughs> this week, I figured, what the hell? What the hell? Why not? Um, no, I love Kevin. All right, so uh, now we got, we let's do this segment, or should we do it with, we should do it with our guest. Let's Whatever bring our guest on. Um All right. Our next guest is our favorite fitness coach. She has been on here before, and she's going to be on again. Please welcome Amy Zeal. Hi. Hey. Welcome, everybody. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Very good. Uh, yeah, excellent. Did you see the the jokes about the uh, national uh, health and or what national was it? Employee Fitness Day or yes, something yes. to that nature. So um, I don't really know what that means. I don't know if most companies <laughs> have. I mean, uh, you know, you guys were talking about a lot of things about, you know, how the pandemic brought out the creative side in you. And actually, that's why I started doing the fitness coaching, because my job that I have done for the past 10 years was shut down. So um, I don't I don't even know if you know this about me, and I usually don't talk about this, but I work at Coyote Ugly. Have you ever heard of Coyote Ugly? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I've worked there for 10 years, and uh, it's part of MGM. It's at New York, New York Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. And we actually have an in-house company personal trainer who – I go to, and she has actually helped me win fitness competitions. So there, there is such a thing as having an employee fitness day, I guess. I mean, and I also just didn't realize that one day would be, you know, um, dedicated to so many different things. Like it's like, it was national fitness day, national, I, I know it wasn't IBS day. It was IBD day, but I'm thinking <laughs> IBS. My mom has IBS. I feel so bad. And that's what I started thinking about. I was like, oh my God, there's a day for everything. There is. There really is. Yeah. So um, uh, we have a, we have a funny uh, segment we want to do with you here. And okay. we do, we do this with guests sometimes. And okay. it, it has to do with unfortunate names. Unfortunate names. Okay. Yes. The segment is called Unfortunate Names. <laughs> I can't even imagine what the next I found a free clip of a guy crying in the rain, and I just figured it was perfect for the unfortunate names. <laughs> so these are actual names that we've okay. come across that were like, what were the parents thinking? Right. All right. All right. First one. Fabio Madonna. Fabio Madonna. Okay. I, yeah, I just definitely uh, born in the eighties, mid eighties, 85. I'm guessing. Right. I mean, they couldn't decide who their favorite celebrity was. So they just chose both of them. 
<laughs> Can you imagine having this? Ta- I'm Fabio Madonna. I mean, <laughs> is that Italian? I mean, I hope he's Italian. Rolling I mean, around it, on the cover of a romance novel. I just picture the couple like being like, you know, I didn't want this kid either. I don't want him. Well, you name it. I don't care. You know what? Fabio Madonna. It's fine. It's whatever. He's a, he, we don't we don't we don't want you, but so we're gonna make your life miserable. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. All right, next one. Now this is a first name, Arash. Arash. It's like it's like, hey, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Arash. I'm like, ah, no, thank you. I'm not shaking your hand. Sorry. You need a cream for that. <laughs> How many times do you think they said I'm itching to change my name? <laughs> Beautiful. Ah, uh, next one. Connie Butt. Connie Butt. Who, who, if you, you got a last name Butt, I mean, I thought that was just a Simpsons prank phone call thing, you know? I mean, Connie Butt what? Like, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just that's just unfortunate. It's not even funny. It's just unfortunate. Or is she a smoker, you know? Like maybe, maybe, are these names like that people were given or was were these like nicknames that they were given after they created their persona no, these were no these were legit names legit names oh, okay i can't tell you how i came across them <laughs> the phone book but, but they're real <laughs> people don't have phone books anymore kevin i know they're on your list to see you at your comedy club that they, they, they were on the list right 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 there you go, there you go. <laughs> next one miney sneed miney it sounds sneed. like a villain from 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 uh hannah barbera I think you know, of lemony snicket. What is lemony snicket from? Uh, yeah, that's I know what you're talking about. I don't know. I don't know what that's from though. A movie or a play? Or like Dr. Seuss? That's like a Dr. Seuss name. Oh, Miney, it's a book. Miney okay. Sneed. That's that was a real name though. What's your name, Miney? <laughs> Where's Eeny? Meeny. <laughs> Miney Sneed has a, uh, <laughs> pimp a pimp name. A pimp name. There you go. <laughs> that actually does make sense. Um, next one. Cherry Peacock. Cherry Peacock. That sounds like a stripper name. That's <laughs> it really does. <laughs> that's a stripper name. She comes she comes out with like a cherry colored peacock plume behind her. Feathers, you know, she's got the feathers <laughs> going on. They and they cannot fly. Those are the those are those birds cannot really fly. They can barely fly. I, 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 my parents' so house cannot fly either, right? My what? Flamingos? Oh, I, they fly, I think. Don't they? Do they? Yeah, a flock of flamingos flying. That's you know, I've seen that before. Or what's the other one? I'm thinking of an ostrich. Oh they yeah, they have, that would be scary <laughs> if they could fly. They're flightless. <laughs> some, can you some imagine the birds like turkeys and whatnot don't really fly, fly, but yeah. they can kind of coast downhill. They, they kind of they, yeah, they they glide. Yeah. I saw a peacock at my parents' place, and it it if I it it got scared and it flew up, and it was it's so awkward. And he like bounced against the roof like twice before he flew up on the. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty hysterical. I'm from I'm from Jersey, and my parents have turkeys, like herds. I, I know they're not called herds; maybe they're flocks. But they have flocks of turkeys that like wander through the yard and on the street, and it's just crazy. Like deer, turkey, possums, raccoons, chipmunks, yep. squirrels. Yep. There was a there was a, a flock of turkeys attacking people in a town once. I, I remember geese attack. I've been attacked what? by geese before. Oh yeah, but geese. I know. But I've seen turkeys were like attacking the cars and stuff. It was weird. Every large bird has the potential to be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Don't piss a big bird off. <laughs> All right, next one. Harry Parent. <laughs> Harry. That's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> why don't you just call yourself, why don't you just call yourself Bigfoot? I, I mean, don't know, man. that's a real name, Harry Parent. Harry Parent. I think I'm thinking yeah. of heir apparent, heir apparent, heir apparent, uh, whatever. Like I just think of like like waxing needs to happen like everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next <laughs> next one. Stale. <laughs> <laughs> Meet it's the next, the new generation of rapper, <laughs> the new generation rapper, stale. I'm That's stale. That's a great yo. rapper name, and I wouldn't be surprised if somebody came out with it. 
<laughs> it's funny to be fertile. I mean, isn't there a rapper called Girl or something or She or something oh, like that? Probably. <laughs> I mean, it is until they decide that it's PC or un-PC and then she can't use that name anymore and then she has to change her name. Right, right. Isn't it? Isn't that your rapper name, Kevin? It is. <laughs> Dale. It? <laughs> him? Can't use him anymore. No. All right, next one. This one's yeah. funny as hell. This one's funny. Fuck damn. Fuck damn. That's like a guy with a lisp. Fuck damn. <laughs> I think that song. Don't believe me, just watch. Woo. <laughs> and the final one. Barry Belcher. Barry Belcher. <laughs> what a name. Two He's in the morning in the bar. You know what he's doing. Drinking a lot of beer. And belching the alphabet. <laughs> can you belch on cue? No. Danny, can you? You're muted, Danny. Danny does not wish to participate in this conversation any longer. He's like, it's my show. I'm going to just peace on out. <laughs> well, here's something. Something's going off on my computer. This is the problem. This is the problem. Hold on. It's got to be a YouTube thing. I'm closing yeah. everything. You guys talk for a second while I try Never to stop this. Windows open. See, that's my problem. I have like 5 million windows open and it supposedly slows your computer down. But I just, it's, it's a habit I can't break because like if I'm open in like 10 different, I work on 10 different things at the same time. You know what I mean? That's I'm, I'm a multitasker. So ADHD, I have it too. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and then like I'll open like this window and that window and that window and that window because I have to go back to it. And if I don't get get go get back to it today, I'll want to go back to it tomorrow, but I might forget. So I leave it open. And then what happens is when you have way too many ones open, you get a crash. And then I forget all the windows I had open and then I have to start over from the beginning. So well, this is this has been a technological disaster this show so far, but <laughs> that was actually the Tony Robbins uh uh, five day challenge thing that I was. Oh, it's the, the own your future challenge. <laughs> yes. Were you doing yes. it? I'm I was doing. I'm, I'm doing KK's unleash her power within right now. Do you know who Are KK you? is? I don't, no. but I know at the end of this episode, Danny is going to walk on coals for us. <laughs> have, have you ever gone to the UPW? I've, I've gonna walk those walk on those coals before. He's going to walk on hot coals for us. Yeah. Tonight, live. On this <laughs> yeah, right. You have to say cool moss, cool moss, cool moss, and you walk across the coals. <laughs> cool moss. You say cool moss, and it's not cool. It's very hot, and it singes the bottoms of your feet. But it's still cool. It's, just, it's a cool experience. But yeah, so KK is uh, one of his speakers, and she does like she opens for him, and she opens for his Unleash the Power Within, and she created an eight-week program called Unleash Her Power Within. So I signed up for it, and we're in week like six, I think, or next week is week six, and she takes us through this workbook, and we're preparing actually for Tony's Unleash the Power Within program, which is in like two weeks, his virtual program, oh, wow. which I didn't know this at, at the time, but we're doing the European Unleash the Power Within. So it starts my time at 3 a.m. in the morning. And so there's I no deal. I don't really know how no. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be at the, I wouldn't want to be at the end <laughs> one. <laughs> Tony is very, like, all organic, like, all, you know, he, he doesn't um, promote health, lemon juice. You could put lemon juice under your armpit. So we're actually KK. Um, she promoted, like, I'm one of those people where when I follow somebody and they promote something, I'll go buy it just because they, like, were talking about it. So she has this special yeah. deodorant called Oxilius. It's actually pretty good. And it doesn't have the um, aluminum in it. Aluminum is the harmful ingredient in deodorants that causes cancer. So you want to get non-aluminum, all-organic deodorants. So, and it actually works pretty well. You know, I mean, I still like my regular stuff, but... Like I'll be sitting there in the bathroom and I'm like, do I want to be healthy or not healthy? Healthy or not healthy? Smell good, smell okay. So, you know, I reach for the auxilius and it works pretty good. Yeah. So wait a minute. You said causes cancer and makes French fries soggy. <laughs> <laughs> People actually use lemon juice though? Yeah, lemon juice. Like you put you put lemon. I mean, you have to be clean and fresh and have not used any 
deodorant under there, but lemon juice is supposed to be a natural deodorant antifungal that you can put under your arms and it will kill bacteria. I'm not going to, I mean, I don't, it also really honestly depends what you eat. You know, like if you eat a lot of garlicky things or another one is, um, what is that, that, uh, that, that Indian curry. If you eat curry, if you eat garlic, it comes out of your pores, even certain meats and stuff, you know? So you really want to stay hydrated. F fung Greek makes you smell like syrup. Um, I don't know what fun Greek is, but uh, drinking a lot of water, staying <laughs> hydrated, taking a lot of showers, you know, really, really helps the BO. But um, eating what you eat, too, makes a difference. Now, what advice would you give to people who are still afraid to go out and still afraid to do anything as far as fitness? How can they how can they keep themselves in shape? I mean, like, you know, I had to really improvise and what I did, you know, during the pandemic, I mean, I, I had a personal trainer, like I would work with two times a week and we did FaceTime. So, you know, and I ordered, I ordered dumbbells. I have like two pounders, three pounders, five pounders, eight pounders, 12 pounders. Now I have the resistance bands that you, you put in the door you lock them in the door and then you can like do resistance. I bought ankle weights. I've got two pounders, five pounders. I bought a BOSU ball. Um, I have what? bands, you know, like the, like the stretchy bands you put on your, your legs and on your arms and you do resistance. There's okay. a lot of things like, and to be really honest with you, like, I don't know when it was, it was a couple, it was a couple months ago. And in my complex, we have a really nice private, and I knew this was going to happen, but you know, one day I just got sick of it. You know, I, I went to the gym and there was a man there and he was on the cardio machine. This is before we knew what we know now. This is when it was like, you have to wear a mask. If you're not wearing a mask, you're going to die. That that was this time period. Right, so right, right. and you had, you had to wear a mask to be at the gym. And I'm like, if I have to wear a mask, everybody else needs to wear a mask. And this guy was on a cardio machine, not wearing a mask. So I, I politely asked him, I said, hey, can you please put your mask on? Like we're supposed to have our mask on. And we got into the biggest fight like this, the, like it, it was it was really bad. And I haven't really been back to the gym since then because I'm like, I don't want I mean, I've gone back, but, you know, it, it was a really uncomfortable situation. I just work out at home a lot still, you know, like my gym gym is probably 20 minutes away. And I still don't know what their sanitation habits are and what their protocols and procedures are. So, but there is honestly so much you can do at home. There, there really is. Like, there's, there's just there's tons of YouTube videos too with uh, YouTube people... videos. There's Zoom classes. There's so many Zoom classes. There's free stuff online. You know, like I have my fitness radio app. It's this awesome app. I mean, I pay for it, but they have the best music. You put the music on and you just start moving. You know, I mean, I, I actually injured myself a couple of weeks ago. I fell and I sprained my foot. So I wasn't able to walk for a couple of weeks. So I've just been doing like upper body stuff, you know, like can't do lower body, you do upper body, you know, you just, you move it around, you know, you, you reduce your calories. I've been into the lemon juice in the water, lemon juice and water in the morning, then celery juice. And then I don't know if you know who Joseph McClendon is. He's like one of Tony Robbins speakers. He was talking about banana tea. So I tried it. I've had it a couple of days and it makes you feel good. You, you chop up some bananas, you boil it, and you add a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of honey. And uh, it's supposed to boost your mood. It has potassium in it. It has nutrients and vitamins in it. And it makes you feel really good. I just add matcha green tea to it because I need the caffeine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, but it's great. It's great. It's a, it's a, those good extra little things. It's the little things you do during the day. You don't have to make big changes. It's the little changes. And if you could keep up with the little changes, you'll start to see, you know, changes and differences in your daily and then your weekly. Okay. All right. Uh, now you, you've done a lot of competitions. Yeah. I've done like seven. And, and uh, take us through um, how one, like, when do you start getting ready? And, and just take us through the, the process a little bit, just so people can understand. I don't know if anybody out there wants to do this, Kevin, but uh, no. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I, I I didn't realize this. My battery is going to die in a second. I need to plug my charger in. Can I have a minute? Sure. Yeah, sure. I'm so sorry. Just, no, just that's keep okay. It's, no, that's, that's just the way it's a good analogy. Going. It's fine. <laughs> Everybody needs to recharge their battery. Right? right. Mentally, psychologically, or in this case, on the computer itself. <laughs> Uh, on the way over here, by the way, Kevin, uh, we, we were getting into Craig's car and there was a bird in the car. Nice. The bird flew in the car. So at, at the mansion, I'm staying at John Lennon's mansion, old mansion, and uh, the doors are open most of the time because there's nobody up there. Nobody's going to come in. You know what I mean? So the front door, you know, I shouldn't be saying this on the air. <laughs> yeah, I, I would not allow a door to be open. it tonight. <laughs> Because where there aren't people, there are mountain lions, there are bears, and uh, you don't want anything coming in. Lock the damn door. Well, the birds were coming in. That's and what I'm trying to find the crumbs on the floor. They were so cute. But the crazy thing was, Those aren't one of the birds came in, right? And I happened to come out right behind him, so he couldn't go back out the, that way. But so he's hopping into the living room, and I'm like, oh no, what's going on? I look, he knew how to get out the other way. <laughs> he knew. It was like they know the whole house. <laughs> They've been there longer than you. Yeah, I think they have. I think they do it all the time. It's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> we're, we should have brought that up when we talked about her feral cat. Too little, too little, I have, I have two cats that I feed that come to. I, I thought they were feral. Like, well, I had this cat running, came running up to me one day. I'm like, oh my god, this cute little kitty, and then another one comes running up. So I'm like, oh, so I started feeding them and, and they would come up to my house and I would feed them cat food. And I'm like, well, I, I have two cats. So I had to buy special food for these cats because my cats have this expe expensive prescription food and, right, right, you know, so, and then I saw, I saw this guy walking by one day. He's like, oh, he's like, you feed them too. And I'm like, oh, you feed them too. He's like, oh, yeah, I feed them too. And then I had another guy who was walking a dog. He's like, you feed them. I'm like, yeah, I feed them. And he's like, they actually belong. I'm like, they're feral, aren't they? He's like, no. He's like, they belong to those two houses over there. So they have a home. But I mean, these cats are very well taken care of. Well, the owners are probably sitting there going, why does he keep getting fat? They're not I'm that fat. The food. I'm my, cutting down on the food. I'm, <laughs> I have a chonky cat. They're called chonky. C-H-O-N-K-Y. <laughs> if you're a cat lover, you're, you're probably a member of one of these private cat Facebook pages, which I am. And they're called chonky cats. And people, chonky cats. And, and, when, and when you sign into these private Facebook pages, they tell you there's no fat shaming. So <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think cats care. I really don't. You know? And so people post pictures and videos of their super fat cats and i just i just love it i just eat it up but they're called chunks they're chunky so it sounds like an elton john song <laughs> i think danny is frozen danny oh. is frozen yes so you got cat hustlers in the neighborhood that they got a little route and they they know who feeds them and who does <laughs> Right he, he was a feral barn cat that stowed away in my husband's RV. No way. Are you from serious? Colorado? Yeah. And so now we have this giant guy. <laughs> what, is, what is your chonk's name? His name is Morris. More. That is a Morris. That is definitely a Morris. An old school cat name. And very then, fluffy, uh, very well fed cat. You know, like this one. Was a feral cat from Dallas. <laughs> oh, I have a black one too. I don't know where he is, but my, my door is shut right now. Aren't the black um, ones the best cats? That I, I have sugar and spice. So sweet. So you know, and mine were feral. I was actually this is back when I lived in West Hollywood. I was shopping at the dollar store, and there was a lady pushing around a carriage, and she had two like little baby kittens in her in her car. And I'm like, lady, what aisle did you get those in? And she's like, this woman. <laughs> <laughs> is, is gonna take these kittens to the pound tomorrow. I'm like, oh no, she's not. And I, I'm like, give me her number. And I was literally drop. I didn't know where I was going. I was just driving somewhere. So this lady called me to like this house to go pick these cats up. And I just remembered like pulling up to this really rundown section of LA. And it had like this van in the front. And I'm like, I'm gonna get kidnapped. Like I was sure of it. And I went up and I like rang the bell, nobody answered. And then this lady came walking around the back with the 
box and I looked in the box and there were all these little kittens and I'm like, oh my God. And like two just kind of jumped out at me. So I just kind of took them home. You know what I mean? I mean, they were, they were four weeks old. They were so little and they were sick too. And, and I knew like they would either die or the lady was going to take them to the pound. So I rescued them and I've had them for like 13 years. Good person. Very nice. Have they been on prescription cat food the whole time? No, I, sugar has issues. He's actually just diagnosed with kidney disease. Mm. So we have to do like the whole subcutaneous fluid needle thing on a daily. And, yeah. you know, but he's doing, he's doing okay. He's doing good, but he has to be on special food and supplements. And, you know, when I go away, I have to take them to the vet. It's, it's a whole, but it's worth it. I mean, they're, they're my little babies. So. I, had a, I had a cat. I had a cat named Misty. And I, I, I named her Misty. She was beautiful, but she was fat. Okay. She, just, <laughs> she was just a big, big cat. Um, and she was the biggest coward. Like uh, one, one day she, cha I, she came running by me and she's chasing this squirrel. Right. And her blubber is going. Bruh, bruh, bruh. <laughs> I bet that you was know, really you funny. <laughs> see it just chasing the squirrel. All of a sudden you hear. Row! And she comes running back, and two squirrels are chasing her. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> she only chased things that that were running from her already. You know what I mean? She never she never really stood up to anything. Yeah. Um. I I was I was shooting my BB gun in the backyard, and uh, I sh uh my father was chipping uh had a wood chipper, and a skunk had ran out of the the, the wood and and he's running right at me and i've got this gun but i'm like frozen i'm like ah <laughs> you know what i mean are you and i and i, and I looked at, and this the the skunk literally runs right over my foot now my cat's right next to me he runs right over my foot and around the fence i look down she's like twice as fat because all her fur is like whoo, like that like she's like this you know and uh as soon as I, as soon as the skunk ran around, she goes, "Wait a minute! He he's running!" And she ran after him. I was like, "Don't!" <laughs> I, was just like, <laughs> I thought for sure she was gonna get sprayed. Oh my god! Anyway, so uh, <laughs> sorry about the glitches, but we were talking about the competitions. Competition. You were asking me about prep and procedure. So no, real, real, I real, real quick, you know. Yeah. So, so it's basically, it's four to five months away from the competition is when you start and you work out, you start three, four, five days a week. You do weights, you do cardio, uh, you clean your diet up. You're eating a high, high amounts of protein, moderate amounts of fat, moderate amounts of carbohydrates, depending what phase you're in. If you have to build muscle, your carbs are a little higher. And when you get closer to the competition, you drop your carbs you have to get eight hours of sleep. You have to take a ton of supplements. Um, when you're getting closer to the competition, you start working out six days a week. That's probably maybe like two months out. You have to practice your posing. I didn't know that you had to practice walking and posing my first couple competitions, but you have to practice everything. You're like how you look in the mirror, how you stand, you know, like. That's, how you so, that's, so, that's, so, that's so that the judges can see uh, the muscles at the right angles and stuff. Is that, yep. is that what it is? like, like when, when you turn around, you literally have to bend over and stick your butt out and arch your back. So they can see the, your like, Glutes if, you don't, and... if you don't do that, your butt kind of, it looks saggy. You have to kind of, you have to stick it out, you know? And I didn't know this the first couple competitions. So I wasn't, and like, I didn't have a coach the first couple competitions. Like I would literally do my competition and then be done and kind of like hit a coach or somebody on the sideline and be like, did you see me? Like, can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? You know, like, and like, I, like if people were nice enough, they'd be like, well, this is wrong and this is wrong and your, your bikini's off and the strings are wrong and your hair wasn't right and your makeup wasn't right. And, Oh, okay. I didn't know all these things, you know? So each time I got a little better and better, but I, I never really had like a coach coach. I would just kind of ask people and ask questions, you know, and just kind of figure it out, you know, like, was okay. It a little, was, it, was it a little bit competitive? Like, oh, sorry, competitive. it so was they, what, what, one of the first comp, I was turned off. One of the first competitions I did as to how competitive and psycho 
the mindset of some of these women are because you have to understand when you get to competition time, you're depleted on food, you're depleted on water, you're depleted on nutrients. Your brain mm -hmm. is not functioning properly. It's just not. Right. Like I, just, I clearly remember before one competition, like sitting on, this is when I lived in Hollywood. I wasn't making any money. I was, and it's very expensive to compete. Like, unless you have a sponsor sponsoring you, it's a lot of money. And I, I just remember sitting, sitting on the stairs of the crunch gym, hysterically crying. And I was like, uh, over the fact that I had like five grams of sugar and I was in a place where I couldn't even pay my rent. And I'm like, I'm crying over the fact that I had five grams of sugar and I should be crying that I can't pay my rent right now. I'm like, right. something really wrong right now <laughs> you know like my priorities were really messed up but you know when you want something you want something and you're going to prioritize according to what you want you know so so the so but the some of the women i mean they must not have wanted to help you when you asked questions right that must have been like a well it was i wasn't directly asking other competitors i was like i had i had a coach come up to me you know, who was nice enough to, to kind of be like, hey, the, do you want to know what you did wrong? This is what you did. Or or maybe I asked her, it, it wasn't somebody who was competing. It was somebody who was helping somebody else. So, you know, I've been lucky enough to have some kind hearted people give me some advice and tips and tricks here and there. You always, I mean, if you're going to be in a competition with like a hundred people, there's going to be one or two good people there that are going to be right. nice to be like, hey, you know, <laughs> way to go, nice job. I mean, I'm that person, you know, way to go, nice job, you know, here, but, you know, it, it it really depends. Like, girls can get really catty, to be honest. Anytime there's a competition, there can be a toxic element, you know. Um, well, there's, there, there, you should have the competitive edge, you know, like the, the, the year before I won my competition, I came in like 19th and I was just like, what am I even doing? Like showing up to this, if I'm not even going to try, you know what I mean? Like girl, like girls here are taking this seriously. Like yeah. you should, th there's something about your peer group that you should rise to the level of the peer group you're surrounding yourself with. Like, and if you're not going to rise to that level, why bother even doing it? So, right. you know, that, that was like something I really had to think about, you know, before I decided to do it again. But you did well on some of the, some of the kind of competitions. I won, I won, I won a, I won a world competition. That's you know? amazing. I, a world competition. I, I, I didn't, I, I was going for top three, to be honest. Okay. Um, because I was, I was trying to beat my best. My best was like, I had seventh, I had 14th, I had 19th, I had fourth, you know? So I'm like, what's better than fourth top three, you know? So I went for top three and I happened to win which was awesome. Like it was a great. surprise. Yeah. Like it was, and really what I was doing, I was working with a coach at the time. He was a business coach and it was to enhance my credibility as a fitness coach. So I had some type of weight under my credits. So if I'm coaching you and you, you know that I won a world competition, I practice what I preach. So you're going to listen to what I tell you to do. But yeah. not everybody does, <laughs> you know, like yeah. some people do, some people don't, you know, it, it, it depends on the person and the personality and how much you want something and how much you're going to pay for it. You know, like a, a lot of things that people don't really understand in the whole coaching world is what you get out of it is what you put into it, you know, and part of that process is if you want a really good coach, good coaches cost money. And that something that I have paid for myself. I've done a lot of Tony Robbins. Like I've done all of his programs. I've done business mastery. I've done date with destiny. I've done unleash the power within. I mean, I've done them all and those are not cheap, you know, no, so no, they're not. I've invested in myself. So, Absolutely. you know, there are people out there who are willing to put the time and effort and energy into bettering themselves. So you really want to be around other people or coaching other people. It's easier to coach somebody who has that type of mindset sure, or, yeah want it you know what i mean it's like yeah. how can somebody reach out to you for coaching um they can go to my instagram um at amy zeal amy underscore zeal uh that's the best way to reach me there it is there it is <laughs> uh, instagram and you can reach out to me um i do 
fitness and health coaching and I also do life coaching. So it isn't just, you know, mind, body and spirit. You know, we'll talk about what you need and what you're trying to do and how I can help you. Now, how you she's Kevin, I don't know if you know this, but she actually uh, when I was doing the living in right before I was doing the living in Corona videos, I think she was trying to coach me and push me. Amy was uh, to, to do something and shoot something. And um, and you got me to do it. You know, you pushed me and then I actually got it done the, the very next day. But how do you keep your motivation when you don't have people like that around you pushing you? Honestly, it's like the ocean. It comes and goes in waves. I'm I'm not I'm 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 not gonna lie to you and be like I'm a hundred percent driven all the time. Like I have to say, like I, I got this injury and it was a little bit of a setback. So I've watched a lot of Netflix. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I go through but but you know, um there's things that I want. And there's certain like with with the whole coaching program with KK. OK, so she she I'm going to teach this to you. It's called scripting. This is the newest thing that I've been doing. And it's awesome. And what it is, is you sit down in the morning and you write out your day like it already happened. Okay. So I would write like, oh, I had the best workout. I worked out every single uh, muscle group. I did my morning routine. I was focused. I was on purpose. I was centered. I had my mission going on. I mean, I didn't, I went to physical therapy. I came back. I had an amazing show with Danny. Like it was totally on, on the spot. Everybody loved it. You know, I, I submitted myself for a bunch of jobs. I have a bunch of auditions coming in. Like, you know, like you, you manifest and you create and you put things in there that you want to happen that maybe haven't happened yet, but as if they did happen, and you're opening yourself up to the universe, to those energies, and you're bringing those energies into you. It's part of the law of attraction. It's part of manifestation. It's part of focusing. Like Joseph McClendon, he he had this. I was watching him the other day, and he was talking about breathe, smile, look, and celebrate. Oh, I can't believe I... So you have to remember to breathe. When people start breathing shallow, that's when you're not getting enough oxygen in and that creates depression and anxiety. So you need to breathe more. You want to smile because when you literally do this, the physicality changes your emotional state and how you feel. Like Tony Robbins is all about emotions and changing your physical state. It's like a scientific thing. Right. Breathe, you smile, right, right. you look. You look to see where you want to go, what you're focused on multiple times during the day. And then you celebrate. You celebrate the small things along with the big things. And when you do that, when you do that on a regular basis, it keeps you focused. It it keeps you yep. Yep. It, yep. It's about it's where you look and where you focus. You know, is the awesome. glass half full? Is it ha is it half empty? Awesome. Awesome. All right. So uh uh you're gonna stay on for this next segment, correct? You have time? Yeah, yep, I have time. Beautiful. All right, so again, let's uh show uh where can I find you again? Instagram, Amy underscore zeal. There it is. There you go. All right. Zeal. And believe me, she's a she's a great coach. She coached me a little bit. And uh, she's a, always a positive influence. And we're always happy to have you on the show. Oh, thank you so much. I love being here. Cool. Yeah. All right. So let's do this segment. Yay. Boom. What are your favorite college party flicks? Hello. How's Hello. everyone doing? Doing? What's up? Being. Things are well. Things are well. We're uh, back at work. Um, so it's like pretty stressful around here, but you wouldn't know it in the old casual video store. <laughs> the end. Uh, good advice, uh, Ms. Zeal, if I may say. Uh, I'm a huge Tony Robbins fan. So some of the things you were touching upon, I was like, yep, 100%. 100%. That said, we're here to talk about college flicks. And I got to tell you, uh, this was Susanna's request. And uh, I had one or two of these movies on my horizon. But once she brought it up, I'm like, let's do it. So uh, we're going to get right into it. Because as management always talks to me after the show, I run too long. <laughs> That's not true. You always say that, but then I can. I have receipts. I can show people. <laughs> Susanna's got the screenshots of, actually, it's just the screenshots of me 
uh, super drunk the, the hours later, like, oh, <laughs> my bitch. Anyway, uh, kidding, kind of. Uh, all right, so we're going to get into back to school, which, uh, th- by the way, this is in no particular order. These are just fun party flicks. Whatever floats your boat, check them out. We're just celebrating them. Has anybody seen this classic? Yes. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. I think you would dig it if you like Rodney Dangerfield or you like uh, an early Robert Downey Jr. or you like Oingo Boingo or Sally Kellerman. There's just a lot of people in this. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield, long story short, is a self-made millionaire who's never graduated high school. And his son is thinking about dropping out of college. So he wants to set a good example. And his wife just cheated on him. He's like, you know, I'm out. So he checked himself into college. Yep. Comedy ensues. And he's a the funniest thing about it is he's a diving coach, and he can do amazing dives himself. Uh, yes, I remember. Yes, I, I don't know if he was a coach. He, he might have well, one point in son. his backstory, perhaps. But yeah, he was known for the triple Lindy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, well, his uh, son was on the diving team, right? Correct. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Keith Gordon from Christine, Stephen King's Christine, I think, uh, 83. Uh, yeah. But you are absolutely right. Yeah, the, the diving aspect was a big angle of it. But uh, it's a good, fun film if you're interested. And it's kind of like a fish out of water, but a fish in water. Check it out. <laughs> it's Dan fun. Dan is the best in that. Oh, 100%. How can I not? You know, that's. Uh, I always say this in every segment. God bless you, Kevin. <laughs> Sam, Sam Kennison is a hell of a teacher. Uh, God rest his soul. Yep. We're moving. I know everyone's seen this next one, so we'll go to the next bit. Old school. Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to, okay, uh, on this segment, uh, I'm going to get a movie that you've seen. I guarantee <laughs> it. I guarantee it. Uh, old school is badass. These guys basically want to relive their glory years uh, and they get a frat house. And it's almost like a post quarter, it's like a third life crisis. Is this, you know, yep. they're in their 30s and such. But uh, they get a, fr- a frat house and it goes off the fucking rails. Part of my language. And it's funny. And I got to say, there's a scene with Sean William Scott. He's like a, uh, I think there's like a, a petting zoo at a party at one of the, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it was a children's party and they had like a donkey or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he can't wait to trank it, right? Because he's like, <laughs> if this thing gets out of fucking order, I'm going to trank this thing. And Will Ferrell, <laughs> who's drunk, is naturally the one to trank himself. And uh, it's just Sean Williams, In Scott the with a mullet, just doing his thing. Just it's perfect. Check it out. A lot of fun. Vince Vaughn, Will Ferrell, uh, Luke Wilson, as you can see. The end. Moving forward. Awesome. Now, of course, I'm going to have to revisit this one. Revenge of the Nerds. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> All right, I got you. So Crazy. this was yeah, this was on the sex comedy segment, but like, I mean, it's a college you know film. Hello, and it's a party film. These guys get. Uh, basically bullied by the uh, big campus or big fraternity on campus. And they have to like climb back to like um, mentally out with them to get their self-respect back and spoiler alert, they totally do it. And uh, <laughs> every segment that has revenge of the nerds, I got to give a little shout out to the standy production value. Boom. Um, so yeah, you know, we've talked about this before. There's you know a scene or two that's a little like questionable in today's society, but like, you can yep. recognize it that it's from '84, and it's just a straightforward piece of comedy from then. Relax, enjoy yourself. Exactly. Moving forward, it's, it's a great movie. All right, PCU. Anybody? No. Yeah. This movie is the most relevant fucking movie today, but it came out and I think like, geez, yeah, '94. <laughs> Anybody? Ha- so, Kevin, have you yeah, seen this? Yeah, no. That oh. doesn't have a. Uh, doesn't have a. Uh, David Spade. Uh, the guy who was the uh, dean in old school isn't he in this one? PCU or am I wrong? Uh, I'm gonna look at the credits because God bless. Uh, I don't know to be honest. It's probably been uh, 15 years since I've seen this. I've seen it a handful of times. Um, I'm getting some notes here. God bless. Yeah, Jeremy Piven. Oh, oh, he's not the dean. He's like the fucking no, animal was, in this film. No, but he was the dean in old school. Fair. Uh, you are correct. Work. I'm getting a note oh, here. And these are really good notes, by the way. I wish everybody can see it in Homeland. Uh, PCU is basically, I think it's Port Chester University, so it's a creative, creative title. Uh, and it's basically as politically correct as a college as you can get. And this is, again, 94. So they were ahead of their time. And there was like one like cool spot to have any kind of freedom, and it's like the pit. And it's this area where just people fuck around and eat pizza and curse and 
sex, rock and roll, and so on and so forth. And of course, they're trying to destroy the pit. It's almost the plot of Animal House, but within PCU. Uh, and I watched it. Um, actually, I got I got to tell you, I watched half of this uh, a year ago when a friend came over, and I couldn't believe how current it was. I cannot. So if you if you're looking for a movie that's probably going to offend you, that's the one right there. <laughs> the end. Uh, do you have any uh, memories of this in terms of uh, the political correctness and how they were like poking fun of it? I mean, this is a Hollywood movie. I was very surprised even then. Now it should be probably canceled and wiped off the face of the planet, if I may. But let me hear your thoughts. You know, I, I barely remember it. Um, it was just one of those movies that I wanted to see because it looked like Animal House. And I remember that. And I remember, John, I can't believe John Favreau was in that. John, mm. Man, that, guy, that guy's been around a long time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he came right up in it. Uh, all right, so, take it for you, Will. Uh, okay, moving forward. Van Wilder. Ah, okay. Anybody? Amy. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to send these films to you. Uh, <laughs> Van Wilder is basically a rated R Ferris Bueller in college, if I may. Some might say it's blasphemy, but it's kind of the vibe they were going for. Uh, in short, Ryan Reynolds meets a journalist who kind of exposes he's afraid to graduate. He's been there for a while. And there's a lot of like antics in this movie, as are all these movies. But this is where it starts getting gross. Okay. There's a dog that's never been neutered. So the balls <laughs> are very full. Okay. So this is a college, you know, it's a college party movie. So of course we're gonna go here. So of course there's an antagonist in the film, you know, like who's trying to, if I recall correctly, he's just like he's a dick. He's like the highbrow. Um, frat guy, preppy dude, uh, possibly, if I recall correctly, courting the journalist that is talking to, doing a scoop on Van Wilder. Uh, but it's, his favorite thing is eclairs. So what they do is they drain the dog's balls, hook oh. up the eclairs, and then they totally deliver it to him, and he just goes to town. He can't have enough of these things. Okay? Oh, so my God. Van Wilder, four wait, stars. Wait, who couldn't have enough? The that bad dude. guy? Yeah, okay. that guy. Hold on. That guy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it gets it gets like a little much. Is but at the end of the day, they're Sorry? That's biological weaponry. A hundred percent. That's a felony. The convention, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, or 100%. Uh yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sure it was butter. Or okay, so you know, it was movie magic, okay? Moving forward. <laughs> this, this, this is going off the rails here. Uh, Dead Man on Campus. I got to say, this is one of my favorite college films. Under the fucking radar and underrated. Uh, came out in 98. I think the summer of 98. Has anybody seen this movie starring Zach Morris and Tom Everett, Everett Scott? I don't think I've seen that one. Highly recommend it. Totally funny movie. Basically, if I recall correctly, actually, I should have seen it a hundred fucking times. Um... Zach Morris is basically kind of the Ferris Bueller-ish. He's like the straight guy. They're roommates. Uh, this guy is starting to fail, and he's going to lose a scholarship. No. And then they, they realize there's a tradition at this school, not a tradition, but like a loophole rule, that if a roommate commits suicide because of the emotional trauma of the roommate, they can in no way be expected to uh, uh, continue their work. So they basically get a passing grade for that year. So what they try to do is since he's failing and he can give a fuck less about school, he's been there for like six years. Since he's failing, they decide to get a roommate, a troubled one. So they go through all these lists of like, they break <laughs> into the fucking record, the school record files and find like the most psychotic uh, college, uh, you know, students. And then they bring them in as their roommates, one by one by one by one, trying to get them and push them to suicide. Wow. It's hilarious. I mean, the premise, <laughs> people might be like, hey, I don't know about that. There's actually not a mean bone in this body of work, even though it's about what they're trying to do. But it's fucking great. And it's a lot of fun. And I got to tell you, the movie is saved, not saved, but uh, it's a home run by the next guy. It's the Auckland there Row. Are, there are families that treat life insurance that way. Oh, for sure. Badly, yes. So, yeah, there's an actor named Lach Lachlan Monroe. I think we have a few uh, photos. Um, he was in uh, Scary Movie. This guy. This guy, oh, I yeah. think he goes by Cl Cliff in the movie. Steals the whole movie away from everybody. Totally funny. Totally funny. 
I can't like stress how funny enough this guy is. Uh, again, dead man on campus, check it out. His energy reminds me of a young Gary Busey. I can see that. He's probably uh, uh, more handsome. God bless Gary Busey, if I may. I mean, you know, you know to teach their own, yeah. but like, you know, was, uh, Gary Busey's like a striking, like, holy fuck, that's a, that's a character right there. Yeah. Right? Am I wrong? Is it well, when, he, when Gary was young, he wasn't that crazy looking. No, I, yeah. I know pre motorcycle accident. Yeah, he was like a guy, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, little, a little cleaner uh, around the uh, edges. But yeah, no diss yeah. to Gary Busey. But uh, I will say it's a badass movie. Zach Morris is hilarious in it. It totally works. It's fun. The end. Anybody on the next one? Rules of Attraction. Oh, yeah. I got one. Yep. I mean, this is a pretty, pretty big cast right here. We got uh, Jessica Biel, uh, with a fucking James, James Vanderbeek, that guy. What, uh, what's that chick's name? Uh, Shannon Solomon. Remember her? Is that is that her name from back in the day? Early 2000s? She was in uh, 40 Days and 40 Nights. First okay. Night, I believe. Um, I guess. I had, a uh, huge, I had a huge crush on Jessica Biel. You know, I actually uh, worked on a short film that she produced in action and uh, got to hang out with her for a little bit. She's super cool. This is back in like Gosh, 2006. Uh, Wally was with me. Uh, we got a bunch of photos. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. She's super cool. Yeah, I went to the rap party. Uh, anyway, this is a very dysfunctional college film, so it's not really a... Uh... Oh, here we go. We got some uh, notes. Kip Pardue. Remember Kip Pardue from Remember the Titans? Anybody? That movie is badass. Man, I feel like I'm getting crickets on this segment. This is college party <laughs> segment. That's good. Maybe You're very... Sorry? You're educating us. That's oh, good. God bless you. Kate, Kate Bosworth too. She, I had a crush on her too. Of course you did, sir. <laughs> uh, and then Ian Summerhall, who's right. He's he's uh, he actually uh, made a short film with Ian Bahar called uh, "It Was Roommates." The series uh, uh, short film he, segment he was doing. Uh, he was also in "Life Is a House" with Kevin Klein. Anybody? Great fucking movie. If you haven't seen that, please stop what you're doing. Watch it. It's a tearjerker, <laughs> but very good. Anyway, this is a very uh, dysfunctional film. It's a Brett, Brett Easton uh, Ellis novel uh, adapted and directed by Roger Avery, who's one of the writers of Pulp Fiction. The other writer was Quentin Tarantino. Okay, wow. Big shoes to fill. So I don't know if he was trying to be clever boy on some of his direction, but after Pulp Fiction hits and somebody gives you a shot, all eyes on you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it is good. It's very dysfunctional moving forward. Now, I know everyone's seen this one. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. So, what are your thoughts on this? Because I just got an important text message. I'm going to look at this while Danny talks to me. Cool. Bam. Okay. I read it. Hysterical. Hysterical movie. And, um, I, yeah, it, it, I mean, they got so many funny people in this movie. I mean, incredibly funny people in this movie. And I always loved Amy Smart. What a great actress. Yeah. Yeah, wow. You know, so when this movie came out... Um, and, uh, sorry, she got a little bit of a lag in the I internet. Think he's frozen. Okay. Uh, when this movie came out, uh, I was working at a theater at the time in 2000. It was called Studio Movie Grill. And at the time, the concept was very fresh and new. It was uh, watching first run films when you can serve dinner and drinks, alcoholic drinks, whatever drinks to people. Okay. Now it's everywhere and nobody gives a shit. It's like, whatever you expect it <laughs> at the time it was unheard of and, and not to get too off into the rabbit hole. But when star Wars came out, Lucasfilm said, sorry, we're not hooking up studio movie girl. We are not allowing the distraction of servers, uh, uh, serving food and especially drinks to impair the audience to ruin uh, the effect of Star Wars. Now they don't give a fuck. Every diner, movie theater gets Star Wars movies. But even though, you know, who, who was the uh, who's the skinny guy in this movie? The really skinny one. What's his name again? DJ Qualls. I've hung out with him so many times uh, at karaoke. Oh, nice. Oh, well, I, I want to. Well, let's go into that real quick before we go into this segment because I, I I do want to wrap up my trailer I, uh, story with the theater I worked on. But talk to me. Well, he's just a super nice guy. You know, I everybody who knows me knows before the pandemic, I was doing karaoke every week. I loved it. And this one bar, he would hang out there. And um, 
we just got to talk and he's super sweet, super nice guy. Uh, very down to earth, very friendly to everybody. And so what you uh, see is what you get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when I was working at this theater at the time, all I saw was the trailer. And I got to tell you, it's one of the most perfect trailers I've seen. And that's saying a lot because, you know, these trailer companies can like really bake up a trailer for people, even if the movie sucks. Yeah. Uh, and so if you're not seeing the trailer, take a look. It's it's artistic as shit. It punches. There's ska music. It's badass. Basically, uh, Brecken Meyer um, is having a long distance relationship with his significant other. I think she's in Austin and he's in Ithaca, New York. And so they're trying to make it work as they're in different colleges. And Amy Smart comes in, they have a frat party night and they make a sex tape. And since Brecken Meyer has been sending his acoustic videos to Austin, he accidentally uh, sends the sex tape with Amy Smart and him to his girlfriend in Austin. So hence road trip. Uh, this was inspired Todd Phillips uh, is the director, writer, director. It was inspired by the road trip in Animal House. And Ivan Reitman actually produced this because he liked the works that the short film, I, I believe, that Todd Film had done before. So it had all the ducks in the row for this to be successful and the shepherding for this to be what it is. And it totally works. It's totally fun. A lot of good set pieces. Uh, I can go on and on and on. Sean William Scott is top form. Uh, but I will say, since gross out comedies are kind of the thing in college flicks, this scene right here, right there, is to be noted. So DJ Qualls, that guy in the Atari shirt, gets uh, he gets he orders some French toast, but he can't have sugar, okay, because he's got health issues. So <laughs> is that Horatio Sands? I think, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he takes it back. He takes the. Uh, the French toes back and he just looks at it for a minute. And if you look in the distance, you can see DJ Qualls chilling in his Atari shirt right there. Just like, hmm, waiting patiently for his sugar to be taken off. <laughs> so this guy proceeds to fuck with his food harder than any, any movie I've ever seen. Okay. There's a moment where he, he puts the, one of the uh, French breads in his crotch and then he throws the other one and he catches it in, in his waistband of his underwear, okay? <laughs> and, and if that wasn't enough, he walks back to the table, refreshes their coffee, farts on the French toast. They don't know it's, it's in his trousers. <laughs> farts on the French toast, says, excuse me, and then walks back. Basically, he delivers this thing right there, whatever that is. And DJ Qualls eats it and says it's good. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> He has mouth voice. Mm. I think yeah. to, to, <laughs> to the to the A players from earlier, it's it might be okay. It's 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 a cousin. It's it, it's biologically tampered with. It's a felony. Okay, <laughs> that's all I know. It's a uh, funny movie. It's a funny movie. For but sure. I will I will say this gross out segment has more charm and and comedy to it, in my opinion. Comedy is subjective. Then. Uh, Van Wilder. Van Wilder is just like super disgusting. At that scene, it's just like I mean, you like to see the comeuppance, but it's like again, it's a felony. Uh, moving forward, uh, Euro Trip, the sequel to Road Trip. Anybody? Yep, saw it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, this guy gets dumped, goes on a European vacation. The end. And there's a lot of like funny comedy sketches. Let's move forward. These are guilty pleasures, but there's nothing wrong about these films. House Bunny. Anybody? She's great. She's so great. Amy. Okay. Uh, yeah, she uh, she's a Playboy bunny who gets kicked out of the Playboy mansion. And she's looking for residence. And she posts up in a sorority house as the, uh, I think, of the, uh, maybe the den mother. I thought Beverly D'Angelo's in that. It's been a hot minute since I've seen it. In fact, the last time I saw it was probably 2009. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it all rests on her. She's comedically golden. Uh, I believe Colin Hanks is in it. Uh, Rumor Willis. Um, it's basically she takes a, a band of awkward teens, you know, uh, late teens, under her wing uh, to, you know, break them out of their cell, so on and so forth. But it's fun. It's a fun watch. The end. Last but not least, anybody? I know you guys oh, have, but. Animal. What? Ah, oh, curse. Are you, you're kidding, right? You're Animal kidding. House. Oh, yeah, I've seen Animal House. I didn't. <laughs> That's okay. It's a little tiny font for sure. Uh, this is uh, the creme de la creme in terms of college party flicks. Absolutely. It, 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 I don't care. 
in the next thousand years, I, I, if I could live that long, I would die on this hill. This is the best call. I don't care whatever comes after. Was That's it also it. when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? <laughs> uh, it's it's a perfect film. Uh, it's it's the worst. Delta is the worst fraternity around, and uh, Dean Wormer uh, has designed. Great. Yes, has designs to smash them down and get rid of them. They're on what, the double secret probation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's 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 got a perfect cast. Everybody's on their A game. Uh, it's a 1978 movie of a 1962 college period. Uh, it's beautifully shot, well done, and can't recommend it enough. That was John, a short segment. That's all I got. It might John be Belushi. John Belushi. John Belushi yes. in that movie was so incredible. Agreed. I mean, he's walking down the stairs, and this 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 hippie dude with mm -hmm. feathered hair parted in the middle, and he's got a cheesy mustache and there's girls sitting around and he's singing if um my, he, he, i think he, he was singing like my life is a bowl of cherries that grows <laughs> grows grow it is, it's just he's it like and all the girls like oh like that but at it's least like, belushi I'm, waited for a second he listened and he, yeah, and he yeah, evaluated yeah. and then he's standing on the stairs and he listens he just grabs the guitar and goes smash 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 just destroys the gu guitar Puts it back in his hand and goes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's perfect. It's a, it's a perfect, sorry, it was just like. Perfect film. In fact, uh, National Lampoon's first feature. So they peaked with that movie. They did. Oh, yeah. 100%. Uh, no disrespect to Vacation. Uh, what's interesting is I find Vacation, and it's, again, it's subjective. It's some fucking guy with videos who likes movies. And so blah, blah, blah. Vacation seems dated to me. But I love the film for what it is. I love the film. Animal House doesn't seem dated at all, even though it's a period piece film from 1978 to 62. Yeah, It's odd. I don't know. It's like one is forgiven and the other is like, mm. A little it's, trivia. I don't remember. I don't remember. Kevin's got something. Sorry, if you don't mind. What do you, no, this, I think that era of Belushi is the perfect combination of person, type of movie, and the time that the movie came out. Agreed. That the Blues Brothers, that little era where Belushi was just at the peak of his powers. I don't know if that can be beat by any other actor in that kind of a time. Shout out to Landis. Yep. You know, John Landis, director. Uh I totally agree. Totally agree. Uh Danny, please forgive me for interrupting. What were you gonna say? No worries. I was just gonna say uh a little bit of trivia. I don't I, I remember hearing this story, but I don't know exactly how it occurred, but uh the some of the main guys from the movie wanted to they went they actually crashed a, a fraternity party because they were doing the movie and they wanted to really be in the experience and they, they were on the campus or whatever and they wound up getting a fight and they wind up get they came back bruised and beaten the next day <laughs> so, so they're method actors <laughs> yeah yeah, so uh, you, you got to look it up but anyway uh, i will ask before i close up the segment because it's shorter than usual if I may admit, awesome. Um, that's your call in the notes tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Amy and Susanna, are there any college films? Oh, you know what? I actually, I feel like I skipped American Pie too. I skipped American Pie. I skipped American Pie too. Oh yeah, you did. My fault. Excuse me, everybody. Forgive me. <laughs> I asked you guys a question, and then I realized I skipped one. American Pie too. They they're basically all in college. But it's the summer, so they rent a beach house in Michigan. And it's it works. I almost like this more than the original. And there's a couple like real hijinksy set pieces because they're painting the house. And there's these two gals that live there, and they're like, oh, we think they're lesbians, but they're not. Yeah. Like maybe they are, whatever the case. So they become like just like this dumb, like male, like spy movie, and they're like spying on them. It's totally fun. Well, they, got, they got stuck in the room by mistake. The girls came home. Yes. And they got stuck, so they had to hide. Yeah, and then they got discovered. Yeah. And then, yeah, it, it was it's it's totally fun. So American Pie is on the list. Now, forgive me, because I actually forgot that one. And Susanna, God bless her. She just rolled with the punches of my forgetfulness. Amy, do you have any college flicks, not to put you on the spot, that you recall that you enjoy, perhaps? And there's no wrong answer if you if you, if there's none that come to mind. I can't think of any. I mean, Susanna, I you're next. Sorry. 
I, I said I went to college. I did the whole sorority thing. So that was like movie enough. Fair. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Yep. Yep. One that resonates with me is neighbors, where they actually live next door to the frat house. You know, with I actually, a baby. I actually neglected that one, unfortunately. Oh. That's a that's a that's a no brainer. That's a great movie. The first one's awesome. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about neighbors for a second. Yeah, neighbors was good. Uh, before, by the way, before Zach Efron was, uh, I think he had just done a High School Musical or something like that. I didn't even know who the guy was. Right, and I'm I'm at this event and I'm catering it. Uh, I'm with a catering company and like everybody was there. Travolta was there. Uh, Christopher Walken was there and I'm walking by Zach Efron and all of a sudden this big guy comes up and he goes like this, you know, his handler like, or guard. Yeah. And, and I'm just picking up plates off the table. And I looked at him. I was like, what the hell? He, I don't even know this kid. Right. And Zach looks at me and he goes, and he shakes his head like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just thought of a college movie. I'm not sure. Pitch Perfect? Yes. It is. No. It is. <laughs> the entire no, series. Not, I love yep. Pitch Perfect. Yes. But that's not that's not the raunchy comedies that we've been we're doing for this. No, week. no, but it's a college. It's a college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, is. Hundred percent. The, the question correct. wasn't about raunchy comedies. It was about college party flicks. Is Pitch Perfect <laughs> a party flick? These are I mean, yes, what kind of party of doesn't have a party? Uh, if it doesn't have raunch, it's lame. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Pitch Perfect is a uh, you know absolute car uh, well received. It's not college. the college party movies you're talking about, but it yeah. Is when I when I think of uh, Pitch Perfect, I think of of course there's some party scenes, but I think it's at the end of the day it's a competition. It's more like a bring it on to me when I think about it. Am yeah. I right. wrong? Right, mm -hmm. right. No, yeah, it's right. a super competitive. Yeah, you know. And rightly so. I mean, that's the whole plot. But um, uh, what was the other one we were talking about? Oh, yeah, Neighbors was yeah. fucking great. Neighbors was very good. In fact, you're absolutely correct. Zach Efron was on my radar in terms of like, yeah, he's a Disney guy. He does High School the Musical. But in terms of like somebody I'd watch, I mean, I, at the time I was like 39 when the movie came out. Like I had no business watching that shit. Uh, I think this he, is where he changed from Disney character to super hot character. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was his. Well, transition. I mean, fucking hilarious. He was hilarious, like he to was. act opposite Rogan and and even steal the scenes from Rogan at times. Like, well, like, he was just hurtless that, most of the time. Uh, well, a, 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 <laughs> fucking comedically, come on now, not Abercrombie and Fitchy. But the point <laughs> is, is like you know, he was he was standing his ground, and it was it was like it was very the she, the screen was shared very equally, and sometimes. You know they they bested each other, but that chemistry that they had was very good. I thought the first one was awesome. So and uh, awesome. Rose Byrne was best. Uh, how you doing about there, Craig? Good to see you. <laughs> uh, hey. Craig's here. Hey guys. Uh, uh, do you have a college party movie, by the way, uh, that you're interested in? Anybody? Uh, what do you think, Craig? Uh, I did do a, a, a party movie, a college, well, like a school movie. It was called Senior Skip Day. Check it out. Oh, killer! Well, there you go. There you uh, go. Senior skip day. I'm. Uh, I will check it. Yeah, Larry Miller, Norm Macdonald, and a bunch of crazy kids. Oh, badass! You know, I actually almost threw an accepted. Has anybody ever heard of that one? Mm -hmm. Yes, I watched yeah. that last week with my kids. Yes. Justin, Justin Long, Long, and they mm -hmm. do the fake college. That's actually a solid piece of work. You know. Um, yep. Yeah. So that's all I got. Thank you awesome. again. Good night. <laughs> thank you, Anthony. <laughs> yep. Uh, thank you, oh, Amy, my. for being on the show. Thanks, Thanks for to Bernadette. Me. Thanks to Bernadette, Kevin, and Susanna, the team, the unbeatable team and with Anthony, all of us together. Great show tonight. Thank you guys, all of you. And please uh, donate, guys. Look at the bottom of the screen right there. Uh, Anchor.fm slash the Danny McDermott show slash support. And uh, yeah, tell your friends. And uh, we're going to have, we got a lot of cool guests coming up. So please stay tuned. And we're on 11 different platforms now, Susanna. Yes. Yes, yes 11. 11 platforms, including including Spotify and iTunes. And I got a creepy man on my shoulder. So thank you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> He's Have been taking night. pictures all night, Danny. Good night. <laughs> thanks for coming and thanks for watching. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Nope. Uh...